nature of the rulers. Concerning the reality of the authorities, the great apostle, through the spirit of the father of truth, referred to the authorities of darkness and told us our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the authorities of the world and the spirits of wickedness. I have sent you this writing because you have asked about the real nature of the authorities. The leader of the authorities is blind. Because of his power, ignorance, and arrogance, he said, with power, I am God, there is no other but me. When he said this, he sinned against the realm of the all. This boast rose up to incorruptibility and a voice answered from incorruptibility and said, You are wrong, Samael, which means blind God. His thoughts were blind. He expressed his power, that is, the blasphemy he had uttered, and pursued it down to chaos and his mother, the abyss, at the instigation of Pistis Sophia. She established each of his offspring according to its power after the pattern of the eternal realms above, for the visible originated from the invisible. Incorruptibility looked down into the region of the waters. Her image appeared as a reflection in the waters, and the authorities of darkness fell in love with her. But they could not grasp the image that appeared to them in the waters, for they were weak and what is only of soul cannot grasp what is of spirit. For the authorities were from below, but the image of incorruptibility was from above. This is why incorruptibility looked down into that region, so that, by the Father's will, she might bring all into union with the light. The rulers made plans and said, Come, let's create a human of soil from the earth. They formed their creature as a being entirely of the earth. These archons have bodies that are both female and male, and faces that are the faces of beasts. They took soil from the earth and formed their human after their own bodies and after the image of God that had appeared to them in the water. They said, come, let's grasp the image by means of the form we have shaped so that the image may see its male partner and fall in love with it, and we may seize it with the form we have shaped. They did not understand the power of God because they are powerless. Samael blew into his face, and the human acquired a soul and stayed upon the ground for many days. The rulers could not make him arise because they are powerless. Like storm winds, they kept on blowing that they might try to capture the image that appeared to them in the waters, and they did not know what its power was. All these things came to be by the will of the Father of the All. Later, the spirit saw the person of soul upon the ground. The spirit came forth from the adamantine land. It descended and made its home within him and that person became a living soul. And the spirit called his name Adam, since he was found moving around upon the ground. A voice came from incorruptibility to help Adam. The rulers gathered all the animals of the earth and all the birds of the sky and brought them to Adam to see what Adam would call them, that he might give a name to each of the birds and all the animals. The rulers took Adam and put him in the garden, that he might cultivate it and watch over it. They commanded him and said, You may eat from every tree in the garden, but do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Do not touch it, for the day you eat from it, you will surely die. They said this to him, but they did not understand what they said to him. Rather, by the Father's will, they said this in such a way that Adam might eat 
and Adam might not perceive them as would a completely material person. The rulers plotted together and said, Come, let's make a deep sleep fall upon Adam. So Adam slept. The deep sleep they made to fall upon him, and he slept, is ignorance. They cut open his side, like a living woman. Then they repaired his side with flesh in place of her, and Adam had only a soul. The woman of spirit came to him and spoke with him, saying, Arise, Adam. When he saw her, he said, You have given me life. You will be called the mother of the living. For she is my mother. She is physician, woman, one who has given birth. The authorities approached their Adam. When they saw his female partner speaking with him, they became aroused and lusted after her. They said to each other, Come, let's ejaculate our semen into her. And they chased her. But she laughed at them because of their foolishness and blindness. In their grasp she turned into a tree. And when she left for them a shadow of herself that looked like her, they defiled it sexually. They defiled the seal of her voice, and so they convicted themselves through the form they had shaped in their own image. Then the female spiritual presence came in the shape of the serpent, the instructor. The serpent taught Adam and Eve and said, What did Samael say to you? Did he say, You may eat from every tree in the garden, but do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? The woman of flesh said, Not only did he say, Do not eat, but also, Do not touch it, for the day you eat from it, you will surely die. The serpent, the instructor, said, You will not surely die, for he said this to you out of jealousy. Rather, your eyes will open, and you will be like gods, knowing good and evil. And the female instructor was taken away from the serpent, and she abandoned it as something of the earth. The woman of flesh took from the tree and ate, and she gave to her husband as well, and thus these beings, who had only a soul, ate. Their imperfection became apparent in their ignorance. They recognized that they were stripped of the spiritual and they took fig leaves and tied them around their naked bodies. The leader of the Archons came and said, Where are you, Adam? For he did not know what had happened. Adam said, I heard your voice and was afraid because I was naked, and so I hid. The ruler said, Why did you hide, unless it is because you ate from the only tree from which I commanded you not to eat? You did eat. Adam said, The woman you gave me offered me the fruit, and I ate. And the arrogant ruler cursed the woman. The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The rulers turned to the serpent and cursed its shadow, so that it was powerless, and they did not know it was a form they themselves had shaped. From then on, the serpent was under the curse of the authorities. The curse was on the serpent until the perfect human was to come. The rulers turned to their Adam. They took him and cast him and his wife out of the garden. They have no blessing, for they are also under the curse. The rulers threw humanity into great confusion and a life of toil so that their people might be preoccupied with things of the world and not have time to be occupied with the Holy Spirit. After this, Eve gave birth to Cain, their son, and Cain farmed the land, and Adam had sex with his wife. She became pregnant again and gave birth to Abel, and Abel was a shepherd. Cain brought in produce from his field, and Abel brought in an offering from his lambs. God looked with favor upon the offering of Abel, but he did not accept the offerings of Cain. Cain, man of flesh, 
pursued Abel, his brother. God said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? Cain answered and said, Am I my brother's keeper? God said to Cain, Listen, the voice of your brother's blood is calling to me. You have sinned with your mouth, and it will come back to you. Whoever kills Cain will release seven vendettas, and you will live groaning and shaking upon the earth. Adam had sex with his partner Eve again. She became pregnant and bore Seth for Adam. She said, I have given birth to another person through God in place of Abel. Eve became pregnant again and gave birth to Norea. Eve said, He has produced for me a virgin to help many human generations. Norea is the virgin whom the forces did not defile and humanity began to multiply and develop. The rulers plotted together and said, Come, let's cause a flood with our own hands and destroy all flesh, animal, and human. When the ruler of the forces learned of their plan, he said to Noah, Make an ark of wood that will not rot and hide in it, you and your children and the animals and the birds of the sky, large and small. Put it on Mount Seir. Orea came to Noah and wanted to board the ark. When he would not let her, she blew on the ark and made it burn up, so he rebuilt the ark. The rulers went to meet Norea, for they planned to seduce her. Their leader said to her, Your mother Eve came to us. But Norea turned to them and said, You are the rulers of the darkness, damn you. You did not have sex with my mother, but with one of your own ilk. For I am not from you, I am from the world above. The arrogant ruler turned with his might, and his expression was like a blazing fire. He was bold toward her and said, You must serve us sexually, as your mother Eve did, for I have been given. But Norea turned with the power of God and called in a loud voice to the Holy One, the God of the All. Help me with these unrighteous rulers and rescue me from their hands now. An angel came down from heaven and said to her, Why are you calling to God? Why are you so bold toward the Holy Spirit? Norea said, Who are you? The unrighteous rulers had left her. The angel said, I am Elelith, understanding the great angel who stands before the Holy Spirit. I have been sent to speak with you and rescue you from the hand of the lawless ones, and I shall teach you about your root. I cannot describe the power of that angel. Its appearance is like fine gold, and its garment is like snow. My mouth simply cannot bear to speak of its power and the appearance of its face. The great angel, Elelith, spoke to me and said, I am understanding. I am one of the four luminaries who stand before the great invisible spirit. Do you think these rulers have power over you? None of them can overpower the root of truth. For on behalf of the root of truth, a figure has appeared in the last days, and these authorities will be restrained. These authorities cannot defile you or that generation. For your home is with incorruptibility, where the virgin spirit dwells who is superior to the authorities of chaos and their world. I said, My Lord, teach me about the power of these authorities. How did they come into being? With what kind of nature? Of what material? Who created them and their power? The great angel Elelith, who is understanding, said to me, Incorruptibility dwells within infinite realms. Sophia, who is called Pistis, 
wanted to create something by herself without her partner, and what she produced was from above. There is a curtain between the realms above and the aeons below. A shadow formed beneath the curtain, and the shadow became matter, and the shadow was cast into a region. What she produced came to be something material like an aborted fetus. It took shape from the shadow, and it became an arrogant beast resembling a lion. It was androgynous, as I already said, because it came from matter. The beast opened his eyes and saw a vast amount of matter without limit, and he became arrogant and said, I am God, and there is none but me. When he said this, he sinned against the realm of the all. A voice came from above the tyrannical realm and said, You are wrong, Samael, which means blind God. He said, If anything exists before me, let me see it. At once, Sophia pointed her finger and brought light into matter, and she pursued it down to the region of chaos. When she returned up to her light, darkness once again came upon matter. This ruler was androgynous and made himself a huge realm, an expanse without limit. He considered creating for himself offspring, and he created for himself seven offspring, androgynous like their parent. He said to his children, I am God of all. Zoe, daughter of Pistis Sophia, called out and said to him, You are wrong, Sakla, whose name is understood as Yaldabaoth. Zoe breathed into his face, and her breath became for her a fiery angel, and that angel bound Yaldabaoth and cast him down into Tartaros, at the bottom of the abyss. When Sabaoth, son of Yaldabaoth, saw the strength of that angel, he repented and condemned his father and his mother matter. Sabaoth loathed his mother but he sent songs of praise up to Sophia and her daughter Zoe. Sophia and Zoe took him up and established him over the seventh heaven, below the curtain between what is above and what is below. He is called God of the Powers, Sabaoth, because he is above the powers of chaos, for Sophia established him. When these things happened, Sabaoth made himself a huge four-faced chariot of cherubim, and an infinity of angels as ministers, and harps and lyres. Sophia took her daughter Zoe and made her sit at his right to teach him about the things that are in the eighth heaven, and she put the angel of wrath at his left. Since that day his right had been called life, and the left has represented the unrighteousness of the tyrannical realm above. These things happened before your time. When Yaldabaoth saw Sabaoth exalted in such great glory on high, he envied him, and his envy became something androgynous. This was the beginning of envy. Envy produced death, death produced children, and death put each in charge of a heaven. All the heavens of chaos were full of their masses. But all these things came to be by the will of the Father of the All, after the pattern of all that is above, so that the sum total of chaos might be reached. Look, I have taught you about the form of the rulers, the matter in which the form was produced, their parent and their world. I said, My Lord, am I also from their matter? You and your offspring are from the Father, who was from the beginning. The souls come from above, from incorruptible light, so the authorities cannot approach them because of the spirit of truth within them, and all who know this way of truth are deathless among dying humanity. But that offspring will not appear now. It will appear after three ages and free them from the bondage of the authorities' error. I said, My lord, how long will it be? He said to me, Until the time when the true human in human form reveals the spirit of truth 
that the Father has sent. Then he will teach them about everything and anoint them with the oil of eternal life, given from the generation without a king. Then they will be freed of blind thought. They will trample death, which is of the authorities, and they will ascend into the infinite light where this offspring is. Then the authorities will surrender their years and ages. Their angels will weep over their destruction, and their demons will mourn over their death. Then all the children of the light will know the truth, and their root, and the Father of the All, and the Holy Spirit. They will all say with one voice, The Father's truth is just. The child is over all and with everyone, forever and ever. Holy, holy, holy. Amen. <laughs>